Hello and welcome everyone to this week's weekly review, the Gold and Silver Club end of week commodities review for the 26th of September 2014, presented by myself, Phil Carr and Nick Kelsey at the Gold and Silver Club. So today we will of course be reviewing the latest developments in the commodities markets. We will be analysing the week's performance. The live session will cover a end of week summary for the commodities markets. We'll be reviewing the top trades of the week, live market commentary and technical analysis, the week ahead, so key events looking forward, and of course we'll be answering any questions on today's webinar too. Okay, so first off, we'll just have a look at the major fundamentals which have uh, driven this week. So gold prices have rebounded as the global stock market sells off. A huge sell-off in global stock markets on Thursday combined with geopolitical conflicts boosted gold prices on Friday. Gold moved higher on Friday morning, building on the previous session's gains after heavy sell-off in global stock markets spurred demand for the precious metal. Broadly, negative sentiment has prevailed on global stock markets during this week, with the huge sell-off coming on Thursday. The Standard & Poor's 500 index booked a 1.62% loss. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dived 1.54%, and the Nasdaq Composite sank 1.94%. So Europe posted the similar picture with uh, stock markets ending Thursday in the deep red. In the other commodities markets, natural gas prices gained this week to touch $3.97 after the Energy Information Administration reported that operators injected 97 billion cubic feet into storage last week, close to expectations. Elsewhere, the grains continue to fall lower this week. Corn was last trading down at 1.06% at $3.26 a bushel, while wheat lost 1.3% to trade at $4.74 a bushel. So the very uh, favourable weather outlook over the next five to seven days is pushing the idea that we'll see some meaningful harvest progress between now and next week, which is viewed as bearish for prices in the near term. The above fundamentals presented commodity traders with a number of back-to-back -back profitable trading opportunities, which uh, will go through in our top trades of the week. So before we start, I'm Phil Carr, professional trader, trainer and speaker. I'm the co-founder and director of the Gold and Silver Club. I specialize in teaching people how to make money from trading the most lucrative financial markets in the world, gold, silver, oil, natural gas, the agricultural commodities. I've trained thousands of individuals to become independent traders and successfully manage their own investment portfolio. Also responsible for the research and development of the Gold and Silver Club trademark strategies that have a proven track record of generating returns for traders and a regular contributor to a number of financial publications. Speak at numerous trading seminars, webinars and workshops. Joining me in running the Gold and Silver Club is Nick Kelsey, professional trader, investment analyst and speaker. Nick began his career within private wealth management in 2002 before making the transition into proprietary trading. Prior to co-founding the Gold and Silver Club, spent several years coaching professional fund managers and traders internationally for some of the world's top tier hedge funds and investment banks. And through his first hand relationship with some of the world's most successful traders, discovered the formula, mindset and tools that can give any individual the definitive edge to trade in any economy. He also regularly writes a number of global business and financial publications. who have appeared frequently on financial television. Okay, so that's just a bit of background on the Gold and Silver Club. Now, the gold price right now, we're currently trading at $1,222 an ounce. So we'll take a look at the technicals, some interesting setups actually this morning uh, that we can take a look at. Before we do so, the top trades of the week using the Gold and Silver Club signature trading strategies are as follows. So first of all, this week, we've had some great opportunities uh, shorting the grains. So uh, wheat just continue to sell off over the course of this week, hit our nice profit target for a swing trade here so the profit on the trade was 200 points a risk of 75 points to so 750 dollars risks for two thousand dollars profit for a three to one on wheat we also had a lovely sell short opportunity on corn as well the risk on the trade 60 points so 600 dollars risk for each lot traded for a profit of 135 points so 1350 dollars profit for each lot traded for a two to one and of course we had a nice sell short opportunity for gold here this week so the risk on the trade 75 points and the profit 150 points for a two to one and one thousand five hundred dollars profit i'll go through um some setups we've got actually lining up at the moment on the metals right now okay so first of all we'll move straight across actually to the gold market so gold you can see uh we're still very much um we're, we're still trading within a very tight 
trend channel at the moment. You can see the gold price is just tending to uh, have a staircase stepping pattern at the moment. We're just continuing to sell off and break down lower. Uh, at the moment, we've retraced overnight and we've come back up to this sell zone around $1,220 an ounce. So very simply, we are looking to take advantage of another sell short opportunity here, just back down to the lower end of the trend channel. So you can see gold very much following a very clear trend here downward trending channel and we've also got uh, a number of other correlating metals which have been selling off this week as well including copper platinum palladium uh, silver all the metals complex looking very weak at the moment the us dollar index has broken out to two-year highs this week so we've had a lovely breakout to the upside you can see uh, we've continued here just to follow a very strong upward trend uh, on the us dollar so you can see very clearly the upward trend that the US dollar index is in right now, which we're seeing that just put a lot of pressure on the metals and that is set to continue at the moment. So we could certainly, we're looking for further downside here for gold today, looking for a retracement, come back down to the 1200 zone. Uh, if we move over to other metals as well, which are looking very interesting, uh, silver did break down this week to four-year lows. We came all the way down to the low of 17, let's have a look, 17 and 32. So $17 and $32 an ounce. We, uh, and 32 cents an ounce we haven't tested these levels for four years so silver really breaking down quite significantly here you can see a major support zone at 1821 has been broken down actually broke down on friday last week and looking very bearish here on silver at the moment i don't see any turning points at right now uh, just looking at a number of different time frames it looks uh, like we could get more downside at the moment for silver that you want to take advantage of we're interested in any rotations back up to resistance to just get a better entry for a sell short so any retracements back up to the 1821 zone and we can look for a sell short here on silver and that's what we'll be interested in doing uh, other metals you want to keep an eye out for is uh, palladium palladium actually got a nice bounce of uh, a key zone here the uh, 800 us dollars an ounce palladium has had a 1200 point pullback uh, you can see it finally did break through this trend channel and a lot of pressure from the us dollar index recently we saw that momentum continue to the downside on the FOMC statement and uh, we can see just we're, we're currently finding some support around the previous consolidation zone at $800 an ounce so we'll be looking out for that uh, to see if there's going to be an opportunity for a buy here uh, towards the end of this week or towards the end of today and going into early next week and we'll see if we get a rotation back up uh, to the upper end of the trend channel palladium is um, one of the best performing commodities over the last five years it's not if you take it out look at the historical chart we're still very much in a in a strong upward trending channel here it's just a pullback at the moment so we'll be looking for potential for a good value buy here on the palladium market uh, copper still following a very strong trend channel to the downside here looks like we may get a rotation back up to the upper trend channel so you can see here uh, copper just following a very clear trend channel here we found support right at the lower end of the trend channel this week we've got a consolidation which we're starting to break above at the moment so what we'd be looking for is potentially a rotation back up to resistance and then we'll be looking uh, for signs of um, of bearish of bearish weakness again and confirmation and just to take the market back down again within the overall trend channel so that's what we're looking at on copper also looking over to platinum as well platinum still remaining um, quite weak here we've, we've been breaking down over the last four weeks quite significantly very similar picture to what we've seen on gold and silver so at the moment the platinum market still looking very weak we've come all the way down at the moment uh, to retest the daily lows here of 1297 so just finding a little bit of support around the 1300 level at the moment currently trading at $1,309 an ounce for platinum you can see we're coming up to a major support zone uh, from June 2013 here but at the moment if we can take out that level we should get more downside here with platinum as well especially if we get a strong dollar looking at the softs so the softs have remained uh, very lucrative over this week we can see uh, the this very strong downward trend that we've got at the moment on corn as well uh, corn we're just looking for again a break of this consolidation zone you've got a support at 324 we'll be looking just for a breakdown and a move to the lower end of the trend channel here down to 318 so you can see we're just tending to ricochet as well between support and resistance of this trend channel and the trend is very much your friend at the moment on the grain so you just want to um, wait for confirmation wait for a break and then take it down to the next major support zone on wheat as well 
Wheat uh, still very strong downward trending channel here on wheat as well. Uh, wheat and corn both providing good opportunities, both for day trades and swing trades right now as they continue to uh, to break down. We're looking for a break next of uh, 461.97 will be the next key area of support to break here on wheat too. Uh, moving over to the energies, very similar situation actually on the energies as well. Very strong trend channels. Brent crude oil has been following a trend channel over the last uh, six weeks here. Downward trending channel, you can see we came down earlier on this week on uh, Wednesday we uh, we bounced off a uh, major support zone the trend channel looks like we may get a rotation back up to resistance here so there may be a day trade opportunity for you just to take Brent back up to resistance up to 98.28 then we'll look for further weakness again just to continue this uh, staircase stepping down pattern which we're just getting on a lot of the commodities right now uh, also, if you look at light sweet crude oil, it's making a bit of a, a break for it at the moment. It needs to get above 94.17 and also clear 96 uh, to build a base here at the moment. We're just continuing to consolidate between major support at uh, 89.50 and resistance at 94. So I'd like to see a breakout of this zone uh, for the next set up here. My preference is uh, Brent at the moment, which is following a much clearer trend channel, but we'll, we will get involved in this for a breakout if we can break above either support or resistance. And finally, natural gas market also following a very clear trend channel here. You can see at the moment We've found support here again or earlier on in the week on Monday and Tuesday, and uh, we've again found uh, support on yesterday's natural gas storage inventories were supported for the price. We had a nice hammer here, which is formed on the daily. So we'll be looking towards the next resistance zone just above here, which meets uh, the trend channel about 4.073 is the, is the key level of resistance next for the natural gas market. Uh, so at the moment, I would say definitely key focus for this morning. Keep an eye on gold. We're looking for a retracement back down to the 1200 zone. Uh, that that looks a very clear move that we could have this morning. And uh, just yeah, just uh, other markets that we're looking at is just for a continuation of uh, a sell off in the grains. Uh, Chris, right. OK, so Chris, good question from Chris. I'll come on to that actually shortly, Chris, just regarding our upcoming courses. No problem at all. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just move over. That is the technicals and what we're looking at right now. So again, gold is going to be a major focus for us this morning and the grains here as well. Uh, we'll move over to the major news announcements which are coming up today too so the week ahead the key events looking forward that we need to pay attention to next week which will influence our commodities trades monday the 29th of september at 3 p.m bst 10 a.m eastern time we have the u.s pending home sales so the national association of realtors nar uh, pending home sale report measures the change in the number of home under contract to be sold but awaiting the closing transaction excluding new construction so a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. On Tuesday, the 30th of September at 3 p.m. BST, 10 a.m. Eastern time, we have the US consumer confidence. So the consumer confidence measures the level of consumer confidence in economic activity. It is a leading indicator as it can predict consumer spending, which plays a major role in overall economic activity. Higher readings point to high consumer optimism. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. Wednesday, the 1st of October at 3.30 p.m. BST, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the U.S. crude oil inventories. That data reports the number of barrels of crude oil commercial firms have in their inventory. A very important announcement for you if you trade the energies and oil. Uh, commercial firms report those inventory levels to the Energy Information Administration on a weekly basis. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bearish for crude oil prices, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bullish. And then moving on to the latter part of next week on Thursday, the 2nd of October at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the U.S. initial jobless claims. That data measures the number of individuals who filed for unemployment insurance for the first time during the past week. This is the earliest U.S. economic data. Week to week numbers can be volatile. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the U.S. dollar, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. Thursday, the 2nd of October at 3 p.m. BST, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the U.S. factory orders. Factory orders measure the change in the total value of new purchase orders placed with manufacturers. Uh, that report also includes a revision of the durable goods order data released about a week earlier, as well as data new data on non-durable goods orders. So a higher than expected reading again should be taken as bullish for the US dollar and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. And finally, on Thursday, the 2nd of October at 3.30 p.m. 
BST, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, we have the U.S. Natural Gas Storage Report. So the Energy Information Administration, they provide the Natural Gas Storage Report every week, measuring the change in the number of cubic feet of natural gas held in underground storage during the past week. A higher than expected reading, again, should be taken as bearish for natural gas prices, while a low than expected reading should be taken as bullish. Uh, certainly an announcement you want to watch if you do trade the energies and natural gas. So those are the six major announcements we need to uh, keep an eye on as we go into next week. And of course, if you would like to learn to trade commodities with the Gold and Silver Club, courses are available at our international training centers and online. So Chris, just coming back to your question there, uh, to request information on the Gold and Silver Club coaching programs and live trading room, please uh, just go to www.jointhegoldandsilverclub.com. Uh, or if you are able to call us, you can call us at our London, New York, Johannesburg, our Budapest or Hong Kong office. Uh, so I'll leave the numbers on the screen there very shortly. Also, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter at www www.thegoldensilverclub.com you'll receive free weekly reports on the precious metals energies and agriculture as well as live market analysis and prices so do make sure you take advantage of that as well okay superb right so with that that is um that is the end of today's session so plenty for us to look at today and lots of setups for the day ahead so uh, again we wish you good trading if you'd like to get in touch i'll leave the details on the screen have a great weekend and we'll see you all on the next one okay thanks everyone bye bye